Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be in this uh, great state of Florida. I'll just uh, give you a presentation about what, what, what are Morocco's ambitions, uh, our African amb ambitions, our industrial policy. So let's start with the buzzword, openness. Uh, openness in Morocco is a reality. You can see here that our soccer team in the World Cup was the most international soccer team <laughs> in the world. So th th this is important. Thank you. This is important because if you know a little bit of soccer, you know that uh, uh, inter intercultural management is important. When you have to manage uh, players who come from different European countries and who have different cultural uh, uh, baggages, uh, you understand that in Morocco we have this uh, um, latitude we are used to work with different people. And I'd like to pinpoint one, one example. The first private sector employer in Morocco, it's not a French company, it's not a Spanish company, it's a Japanese company. And the Japanese management is very uh, at ease with Moroccan uh, workforce. So that was the first thing. Second thing, Morocco has, I don't like when we say Morocco is a stable country. It's a resilient country. Because stable means you pretend you never fall. Resilience means you fall, but you get up again. And that's exactly what we do in Morocco. And thanks to His Majesty King Mohammed VI, we have this democratic transition. And you can see here the economist saying that we have almost seven, eight years of continued progress in the path to uh, democracy. So that's, that's one thing that gives Moroccans hope and investors, international investors, confidence in, in Morocco. Legacy. I like this picture because uh, our former king, uh, Mohammed V, when he visited the uh, uh, Walt Disney in, in Florida. But there's also, uh, what I wanted to say with this slide is that the story, the, the friendship between Morocco and the US are very uh, old. And uh, when in 75, when Moroccans uh, went back to uh, our southern provinces, the, the, the American flag, was uh, in the forefront of those Moroccans. So the, the, it's a very old story of Morocco being in the free world uh, camp. Legacy is also what gives Morocco the, the, the possibility, the capacity to have a long-term uh, uh, leadership. And that is very important to understand that in Morocco, leadership is very long-term uh, oriented. So, Long-term uh, um, um, opportunities are in Africa. And what I, say by, what I mean by Africa is that, because often people understand Africa as a, an African problem, whereas it's a worldwide uh, planetary problem. Uh, an African child born today gains three days, uh, one day of uh, uh, life expectancy every three days. So this means that you have the youngest continent in the world in Africa today. The median uh, age is uh, 18 years old. So this, this is another way of saying that the future uh, highways of growth in the world, they, 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 they start in Africa. This chart shows you that by 2030, uh, more than half of the active age population in the world will come from Africa. So there's no solution uh, uh, to uh, worldwide problems without having Africa on board. And this is exactly what uh, I said about uh, long-term leadership for Morocco in Africa. You have in Africa 60% of uh, the culture, uh, agricultural land that's not exploited. So if you want to uh, uh, help uh, feed the world, you have to have the African uh, um, agriculture uh, in, the, in the picture. And that's exactly what Morocco does. Uh, we have a very big company, you know it, uh, OCP, that it's the world leader in fertilizers, uh, that has uh, huge investments in Nigeria, Ethiopia, uh, etc. So this is the first thing. Second thing, what's the real challenge of Africa? The real challenge of Africa is fragmentation. You have 54 countries in Africa who all together combined, they have a GDP less than Germany alone. So it's like if you take Germany, uh, G Germany's GDP and you slice it into 54 uh, slices. 
you see that the average distance between major cities is the highest in Africa compared to other continents. The average flight time between major cities also is the highest in Africa compared to others. The trade zone, number of trade zones, remember, fragmentation. We do free trade. <laughs> we, we do too much. <laughs> too much free trade. 16 free trade agreements. Uh, the number of, of countries that require a visa for other African countries, same thing. 80, 80, uh, 80 countries in Africa. And the intra-regional trade cost. Uh, these are the trade costs uh, that uh, include uh, logistic costs, also the greatest in, in Africa. So how do, we, how do we manage this fragmentation uh, to ensure the future of uh, African nations? Uh, I'd say the first uh, solution that Morocco has is uh, we have a great infrastructure plan north-south that's called the new model for the south, uh, southern provinces. And uh, it's a $7 billion uh, uh, infrastructure plan to connect uh, Tangimed, and I'll talk about Tangimed uh, city after, Tangimed with, with Lagos, uh, Dakar, Abidjan, etc. And that's, that's very important. The, the amount of private sector investment that goes from Morocco to African countries is soaring during the, the last four years. So in Morocco, you'll have uh, very important uh, private sector partners to go fetch, uh, understand um, uh, African markets. Also, the trade between Morocco and African countries, you see that there's real momentum. It's like since the crisis, since the crisis hit European markets, Morocco has momentum for trade and investment with the African countries. Uh, those are some of the uh, major partners that I told you about. Um, I'd like to stress the fact that Moroccan banks are very uh, um, uh, active and dynamic in, in Africa. And um, as you know, banks have information about markets, information about private sector. They can help you uh, uh, have a triangular cooperation between uh, the US, Morocco, and the African nations. Casablanca is very attractive for international companies. We have 39 uh, Fortune 500 companies that have located in Casablanca their headquarters for African operations. And this is important because they get to uh, um, benefit from the Casablanca uh, hub uh, for uh, air transport. We have three open, uh, open skies uh, agreements with Europe and uh, the US. And this is important for Africans as well as for uh, American companies that would like to address the African market and African opportunities. So location. This is a picture of uh, uh, Morocco seen from Europe, right? And you know that we have eight miles. Uh, those eight miles are very important because between Morocco and Spain, the difference uh, of um, average wage is fivefold. And if you've done some physics during your studies, you remember that when you have difference of potential, that's when you have energy. And this is a point of energetic point that is very important. Very good. You've done some physics, yes? <laughs> and what's important, one of the major economic decisions of, um, of Morocco was in 2003 when His Majesty launched the construction, the building of this uh, Tangier airport. So Tangier Med is a port with uh, 73 uh, different countries that are related uh, to Morocco, connected to Morocco. And it really is the connection of the Moroccan economy to the worldwide economy. And if I go back to this picture, what's, in, what's interesting is that uh, when the, the, the first uh, Ferdinand Magellan, the Portuguese sailor, when he first started the first world tour, he should have had the same view when he started. And then he completed the first tour. So this is a very old maritime trade route that Morocco is connected to. And this is important to understand the power of this uh, Tangier port. Of course, it's a very modern uh, port. Uh, they have a partnership with IBM for blockchain, te blockchain technology, which is important for us and to improve the logistics uh, best cost destination of Morocco. So about location, before, before the 90s, you had growing Europe and North Africa was really marginal in this uh, uh, setup. You have, the Africa was the periphery of the periphery. So uh, right now, the situation has evolved because you have mat mature markets in, in Europe. Now, the, the Mediterranean has gained again its uh, centrality. And I'd like to make a, a symmetry between the Caribbean Sea 
and the Mediterranean Sea. And it's very interesting, the, the symmetry between Morocco and, and, uh, and Florida. So North Africa has gained again uh, centrality with the, the growth that comes from uh, Africa. And in this setup, you have the FTA between the US and Morocco that has been signed. And also we have FTAs with uh, the major um, diversified economies of the Middle East. So we have Egypt, Turkey, Emirates, uh, Jordan, all those countries uh, that have uh, important, um, important markets and demand are, are part of the, um, um, the economic offer of Morocco. So when you come to Morocco, you have access to 1.3 billion consumer, high-end uh, um, uh, consumers that represent 60% um, of worldwide GDP. So this is important. Morocco had the same problem as South, uh, South um, Korea. South Korea had the small population. It needed access to worldwide stage. And this is exactly what we've done in Morocco. So I talk about resilience. You see the crisis, the economic crisis of 2008. You see that Moroccan growth did not, did not, uh, um, um, did not dip uh, during the crisis. So Morocco is a, a secure value in economics. We also have a ratio of investment to GDP that is higher than most of those countries, Turkey, Spain, South Africa, Egypt. We also have ratio of exports to GDP that is higher than all those countries, according to Standard and Poor's, and also savings to GDP, which explains why Moroccan banks are very dynamic in Africa, because they have a very strong position at home. Safety. Safety is important. Uh, you see here that we have the same level of safety uh, in regards to terrorism as countries like Portugal uh, or uh, Norway. And that's, that's very interesting. And, uh, I uh, told you about Japanese investors. Japanese investors, they're very happy to have a secure, safe platform to address African markets in Africa. Uh, when, you, when you talk about economic safety, you see that Standard & Poor's, we have a long-term rating that is comparable to Spain. And this is important to investors because when they invest, they invest in the Moroccan dirham. And you can see here that 91% of the time, the Moroccan dirham had a fair value during the 20 past years. And this is very important because uh, monetary instability can eat your investment. Morocco has a very stable macroeconomic uh, uh, scheme. And that's what you see here, that the, the value of the dirham was very stable during 20 years, 20 less years. So why there is momentum for Morocco and Africa right now? First, North Africa is trying to emulate what, what happened in, in East uh, Asia. So there's this Japanese economist, uh, Kaname Akamatsu, who said, um, uh, when, when countries go up, climb up the ladder of a value chain, they tend to uh, outsource uh, low, low activity to their neighbors. That's exactly what happened between Japan, uh, South Korea, Singapore, Thailand, etc. And right now, it's, it's happening in, in Vietnam and uh, Philippines. And that's exactly what we try to do in, in Africa knowing that we are connected to the uh, European markets. So what are the two drivers of those, uh, those shifts, uh, economic shifts in industrial value chains? First, you have the Chinese new policy of creating a, uh, a, a middle class. So they have piloted the, the, the growth of the average wage in China, which made uh, the chief economist of the World Bank, Mr. the ex-chief economist of the World Bank, Mr. Justin Yifu, he, he produced a report saying that 85 million of manufacturing jobs would be outsourced from China. And this is exactly the strategy of Morocco to capture a part of, this, uh, of those uh, jobs in light manufacturing. The second thing is what happens in Eastern Europe. You have shrinking populations. You see here that uh, Poland will lose 10% of its population by 2050. And when you combine low uh, unemployment and shrinking population, you get uh, uh, inflation in uh, salary uh, and wages inflation. You see that uh, Hungary and Romania had two digits growth of uh, salaries. So all those uh, uh, investors who had industrial footprint in China and Eastern Europe, they, are, they, they, they consider Morocco to be a very uh, unique alternative to that. And I, I should say that when I speak to, when I talk to, uh, um, let's say, automotive industry uh, who have plants in Tangier and plants in Poland, for example, they say there's a very important difference between the two. 
is the average age of the workers. In our plants in Poland, the average wage age is uh, 42. In Tangier, it is 31. And the, the, the culture of the uh, enterprise, the company, the corporate culture, the ambience of work is very different when you have uh, young people who are eager to learn, eager to progress, etc. This is very important in the day-to-day uh, -day life of uh, industrial investors. So the result of all this is we had less than 10,000 manufacturing jobs, net manufacturing jobs uh, each year for the last decade. 2016, we had the boom with 33,000 manufacturing jobs, and now we have 40% 40 per, 40 growth in the manufacturing jobs, and we are working on the, the, number, the figures for 2018, and this, this tendency is accelerating. This is interesting because it made the structure of Moroccan exports uh, evolve, and we are evolving, we have 23% less of low-tech uh, low uh, uh, products, and 31% more of high and medium uh, technology content of uh, exports. We have also a, um, the supervision rate that is uh, booming, 30% uh, jump since, uh, since uh, 2007. And this is important because it shows that we are indeed evolving, climbing the, the ladder of value chains in, in industrial value chains. We can see also that in, if you compare Morocco with other African countries, you have this problem of disindustrialization in Africa, and you can see that according to the African Development Bank, Morocco has uh, uh, gained some success in industrial policy, but uh, what we don't see here is Ethiopia. Ethiopia also has success in uh, capturing some of, uh, some of those 85 million jobs that uh, are outsourced uh, out of, uh, of China. So, Sorry, this may be a little bit long, but I, I'll have just a focus about automotive industry, about uh, aeronautics, and uh, renewable energy. So automotive industry, Morocco is already producing 700,000 cars a year. Uh, this is more than South Africa, and Wall Street Journal is saying that maybe we'll uh, surpass uh, Italy, which is uh, very... I got emotional with, uh, when I wrote that because <laughs> I visited the, the Museum for Automotive Industry in, in Torino, in Italy, and this is crazy to think that maybe we'll, we'll get there. So th this, uh, we have success, and our aim is by 2025 to produce a million cars in Morocco. We already export more cars to the European market than the US does. Sorry for that. <laughs> Uh, we are able to manufacture 60%, 65% of a, uh, the value of a car right now in Morocco. PSA, Peugeot Citroën, that will open its, car, its um, plant in Kenitra in the next few months, will produce a car that is 60% produced in Morocco. And, when, and there's a second factory that they will open that will produce the engine of the car. And the engine, it, uh, it represents 20% of the value of the car. So... In two or three years, we'll be able to produce 85% of the value of a car. This is unique in the world. Why? Because we, we're not exactly an emerging country, but we're not exactly a poor country. We're just in the middle. So we, have, we still have some competitive labor costs and competitive engineers and R&D. You know that uh, an engineer in Morocco, it costs one-tenth of a German engineer, so it's very important. PSA has committed to... Um, uh, hire 1,500 engineers in Morocco. They are, they, by 2020, they already have hired 2,000, and we have uh, doubled the, the target to 4,000. So the cars that will be produced by PSA in Kenitra this year, uh, they'll be 100% designed by Moroccan engineers. So this is an aspect, because the, the title of the conference was Best Cost. We're Best Cost, but not only on cheap labor. We're also Best Cost on R&D. Uh, we, we, it took Morocco 14 years to go from nothing to exporting uh, engines and uh, cars. Uh, it's less than Malaysia and other comparable countries. We do, uh, this is the structure of the automotive industry in Morocco. If you and uh, all you have to know is that Morocco does 25% of the wiring of the automotive industry in Europe. 25%. This is important. Uh, so let's, let's go to aeronautics. Uh, we have two major aeronautics uh, uh, markets in the world, uh, the US and Europe. 
uh, we, th those are the planes that fly with parts made in Morocco. And I, I bet a uh, majority of Moroccans don't know that. Uh, the Boeing 737, 767, 777, 787, all those, all those um, uh, aircrafts fly with, with parts made in Morocco. Uh, we, uh, like I said, Safran, the French uh, um, company, has done co-location of uh, aeronautic industry uh, between Toulouse uh, in France, southern France, and, and Morocco and Casablanca. So this is important because we have more and more engineers that go uh, work in, the, in this field. We have to, uh, American companies also, uh, as uh, I told you about Boeing, which has a complete ecosystem in Morocco. So when you come to Morocco to invest, and if you can demonstrate that you, what you will produce will, will be part of the Boeing ecosystem in Morocco, you can get up to 20% subsidy for your investment. So these are, uh, um, if you want any more details about that, I can provide you uh, after. Hexel does uh, um, composite materials in Morocco, which are very high-end and high uh, technology products. We also have uh, 3D printing by uh, Thales. Uh, they have their worldwide center for 3D printing in Casablanca. And also in, in terms of integration rate, we are at 35%, 34% of integration rate in Morocco in aeronautics, and we have, uh, the target is 42% by 2020, 2021, sorry. So renewable energy is very important. I know it's important for Florida, for example, because you have a very low land, so if the sea <laughs> comes up, you'll have a problem with the uh, uh, fluid. You also have very high um, energy and electricity consumption. So all those matters of renewable energy are, are, are important. Morocco is building, when you're uh, out of space, you can see the Chinese wall and you can see this, the Warzazat uh, central for uh, um, a solar farm. You can also see that Morocco has committed to 52% of its energy and electricity produced by renewable. We are already at 37% right now which makes Morocco one of the best uh, uh, in terms of uh, best nations in terms of compliance with climate change. Uh, this is where you see that Morocco has green light. Uh, Morocco is trying not only to have this uh, renewable energy policy, but also to extract from them the industrial policy that uh, comes with it. So for example, uh, Siemens has opened a hundred million euros factory in the north of Morocco to produce uh, pails for, for, for uh, wind uh, energy, and they, they export it for, to African countries. So we are trying to integrate industrially all those, uh, um, all those policies that I told you. Those are the pails that uh, go to export in, uh, um, uh, from Tangier, they can reach 73 countries in the world. We also have a problem with water, which is not the case in, 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 in Florida, but uh, we have a serious problem of water stress, and we think where there's a problem, there's an opportunity. So the, crisis, the water crisis is a very big opportunity for industry in Morocco. And you see there that Morocco is one of the countries with the higher, highest water stress, but also the highest possibility of producing uh, water from solar uh, energy. So solar desalinization will be a major project for Morocco. We, uh, we already have a strategy for water uh, 2030 and 2050. So this also can be a major field of investment for uh, American companies. We also have a very interesting uh, research uh, uh, institute in, in near Marrakesh in Bengir, the IRESEN, and we are trying to build a map of solar, uh, of the, all the roofs in Morocco and their solar uh, potential. So this also is very important because once you get that, you can have uh, electric batteries go inside uh, the, the homes of people, the administration buildings, etc. This is important. This is a life-changing uh, policy for Morocco. If, if we get 10% of Morocco's automobile uh, uh, park uh, electrical, we'll have uh, 30 million tons of uh, CO2 uh, that will be uh, uh, in, in forms of carbon credit. So this is a gain for Morocco. We also integrated the industrial policy with regards to automotive industry with those uh, renewable energy uh, aspects and challenges. So the Chinese company BYD has signed with Morocco for five plants 
uh, producing electric vehicles. So we, do, we not only produce thermic vehicles, but also electric vehicles and electric buses. This is an important sin signal for uh, all the uh, OEMs in, in the world. So innovation, innovation, who, do, who would have thought that Moroccan companies have um, innovative capacities that are um, comparable with Turkey and, and Poland? That's the OECD saying so. Where the White House report on artificial intelligence also said that they estimate that there are 400 uh, AI companies in Morocco, uh, which makes Morocco a safe place for innovation. Also, we, we understand that there's a financial inclusion uh, challenge in Africa. And we have a lot of startups in fintech that work in Morocco. This is a, a global overview. The next 2.5 billion uh, people to, uh, to buy a phone, a smartphone, will be Africans. So we have to be there with mobile payment and, and uh, fintech technology. So the youth, I told you Morocco has a very young population, very uh, uh, able population. We use Facebook and WhatsApp more than Africans, Europeans, and Americans. So we, we're, <laughs> it's an epidemic. Uh, and you, you can see there everywhere in Morocco, you have this, this uh, huge use of uh, social uh, services. And you see here that the times per day spent on uh, um, uh, social networks in Morocco is more is uh, superior than the US. So it gives you an idea about how connected the population is. The rate of equipment with smartphones uh, in rural areas in Morocco is more than 55%. 55% in rural areas. So it gives you an idea about the, the depth of this uh, m massive dig digitization of a population. So the opportunities uh, for uh, American companies, first you have to know that uh, American companies are number one in Morocco in terms of filing patents. And this is very important uh, uh, as a result of the FTA that we signed with the, the US. Uh, the, f the, the patents in, in, uh, in U.S. patents in Morocco are number one, and are, they are growing 50% uh, uh, from uh, last year. Second thing, from the logistics point of view for exports, we have the same ratios as uh, South Korea, and you know how South Korea is important for uh, American economy, so this is uh, interesting to understand that uh, the logistics between Morocco and the U.S. are very competitive. We have um, um, American companies, uh, I forgot some, there's a next year in the automotive industry, there are a, a lot of others, but I think those are the uh, important uh, opportunities for American companies. This is my email if you want to uh, have uh, any more detailed information, and I thank you for listening to me. Hello, everyone. I am Myron Brilliant. I'm the executive vice president of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Washington. And we're indeed proud and privileged to be one of the three hosts of today's forum on U.S.-Moroccan trade relations. Let me just say, uh, Mr. State Secretary, that was a very compelling, uh, very compelling case for why Morocco is such an attractive place for American companies we should hire you to do the same thing for the United States. <laughs> and uh, when you finish your service to your government, uh, just come calling on us. Um, 